Over the last few videos, I converted a Canon P film rangefinder into a digital camera. And then I broke it while trying to make it better. So here I am doing it all again with a different Sony camera as a donor. In the previous video, I made some buttons to be able to control it. And this time I'm going to be fitting the electronics of the new camera inside this chassis. I will be having to make design changes to this chassis since the new components are completely different to the old ones. To do all of these things, I was gifted a new toy to play with. But before I go do that and start creating cameras, I want to thank the almost 500 of you that have subscribed. And if you haven't, do it. Go be a part of the next 500. This is the new toy, a Revo Point Pop 2 3D scanner. Normally, a 3D scanner is not necessary to mount a circuit board to a 3D printed part, but in my case, everything is packed so close together that there is no wiggle room. Everything has to be in its exact location. This is not helped by the fact that the ribbon cables do not give me any flexibility and I can only place the parts where the cables will allow. Quickly, I found out that I cannot point it at anything I like. Anything too dark or shiny doesn't scan well because these scanners are a projector on one side and a camera to read the projection on the other. You can fix this with a can of something called 3D scanning spray, but it turns out the stuff is really expensive, so I had other ideas. Like this jar of corn flour. Throw your parts in, give them a shake, and out they come ready to be scanned. I started figuring things out by scanning the old camera's components as they were already ruined and the corn flour wasn't going to make things any worse than they were. I didn't have some kind of rotating base, so I used the bed of my 3D printer, which doesn't get picked up by the scanner, and a roll of tape to raise it up. I decided I will start with the sensor, as that is the part that gave me the most trouble last time. I didn't want to ruin the new sensor just yet, so I started with the old one hoping that it mounts in the same places as the new one. The first few scans were not great, but eventually I got the hang of it, and after noticing that the new sensor doesn't have this shield on it, I got these scans of the sensor. All of the components are clear, the surface of the sensor is showing up nicely, and other than the edges, this looks pretty good to me. Next, I took a scan of the old motherboard with no fear to throw this in the flower too. The edges are not great, but everything else is. I have the locations of all of the components, which is important. Now that I have made a scan of the old camera's motherboard and sensor, I can show a good example of a problem that can easily be solved by a 3D scanner. I have to place these components of the motherboard within this cutout on the sensor. There is no easy way to measure this using calipers, even if you bend a few things out of the way. I was able to measure the locations of the mounting points if they were the same height, but I could not measure the components which were at different heights to each other. So I spent a lot of time moving the parts around in the last version until I got them in the right place, but this time with the 3D scanner I should be able to get this right the first time. A few tricks I learned on getting a clean scan is to raise the components off the surface and hold them at a 45 degree angle. Having a piece of white tape on the surface also helps with not losing tracking. Once I figured out how to get a clean scan, I started on the new camera's components. The process was the same as last time, but without the generous application of corn flour and with paper tape instead. Over a few days, I managed to scan the sensor, the motherboard, the SD card reader, the battery. I even took a scan of the chassis with the sensor and motherboard screwed in with white filaments in the screw holes so it's picked up by the scanner. I did not make a new model of the shutter mechanism because it is an identical part to the previous camera and I got it quite right last time so I don't think I need to redo it. On the software side of things, I used GOM Inspect, which is a metrology tool. Which, by the way, is not the study of metros or meteors as I first thought, but the study of meters and other measurements. This software can be used to align the models since they do not come aligned from the 3D scanning software. One of my favorite features is that it can fill holes in an intelligent way which keeps the curvature around it. I can also use this software to automatically create features from shapes and use those for measurement. After the scans got cleaned up, I took them into Fusion 360 and over a few more days I made these final models. The sensor, motherboard and SD card reader. 
all in the correct locations, ready to be mounted. But before I can do that, I still had a few more things left to do. In this camera, the battery cage is a part of the chassis, so it's not removable. So I had to build my own battery cage. I started with a scan of the battery and worked around it. I copied the battery terminal, which is used to connect the battery to the camera. Then it slides into its holder. I designed a nice way for it to clip in, but I broke the clip, so I had to make this piece to hold it in from the back. The main part of the cage is made of two parts so that they are easier to print out. There is a locating pin and two screws to hold it together. The terminal and its holder screw into the top of it and then the whole thing slides into the chassis and screws in two for good measure. I also made a mount for the SD card reader in the new location. I could not mount this directly to the chassis, so I had to build this bracket which goes underneath the motherboard, then the SD card reader screws into that. Now it was finally time to print some test pieces. I started printing out the battery cage which came out great in its two parts. Then I sliced out a part of the chassis to get a partial test print going, so I didn't have to wait the full 13 hours to find out if I'm right or wrong. Two hours later I found out I wasn't wrong. The terminal fits into its holder without issues, I can screw together both of the parts of the cage and add the clip into it. Then it slots into the test piece so that I can make sure it all works together. Once I was confident that the battery cage would fit, I made a full test print and started assembling that. Remember earlier in the video when I said I don't need to make a new model of the shutter because it is just fine? Well, I was wrong. The top right corner is in the way of the new SD card mount, so I skipped trying to mount that and moved on to fitting the rest. The sensor fits in great and so does the motherboard, which is impressive since it's my first try. I did find a problem with this new camera though. The SD card reader is over the edge of the chassis and I don't think I can make this work as it is. Instead, I will use my new knowledge of the flat ribbon cables and use those to extend the SD card reader over to where it used to be on top of the battery cage. I also have a few improvements left to make to the battery cage. I need to add a spring at the top to push the battery out, as right now it needs a slap to come out. I will also have to add a clip to the battery to hold it in place against the spring once I put that in. Overall, a 3D scanner is a great tool to have in this situation. I can use this to measure complex parts very quickly, and I can eyeball things to a precision that is almost as good as measuring. I really don't think that I would have been able to get such a good result the first time around without it. And if I used it for the shutter mechanism, then I really wouldn't have had any problems at all. It's a shame that I cannot say the same thing about my 3D printer, as the Z-axis is completely inaccurate. The chassis should measure 29.8 millimeters, but it comes in at over 30 and a half. I wasn't able to fix this by just scaling down the z-axis like I previously thought I could, and if I did that, the overall height of the chassis might be fixed, but there would be components within that would now end up in the wrong place. So printing this out of nylon is my only solution. Not only will doing this help me achieve a greater level of accuracy and precision that I was able to at home, it is a much stronger material to print from and will give me a much stronger chassis overall. I also love to have this printed out of aluminum, Aluminum? Aluminium? Most of my viewers are American, so aluminum it is. And that's it from me today. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss my next videos where I finish the chassis and then get it printed off out of nylon. See you then.